Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I posted a video. I'm sorry about that. It's been actually like probably three months or something. Anyways, uh, I've had a little bit of break from YouTube and I'm ready to get back into the swing of things. And we, we have summer here. Uh, well, almost summer, it's late spring. But today uh, I was thinking I'm gonna do a review on my tent. This is the Pomali uh, Solo Canvas Yarn Teepee. So this is a one to two person tent. I think it might be advertised as one person uh, with the stove. Maybe still one person without the stove. Not exactly sure with that. But I'm gonna go through and do a review. I will tell you up front that you can fit two people in here without the stove. With the stove, uh, you're definitely not really gonna be fitting two people in there. So I'm gonna bring you guys in a little bit closer and we're gonna be taking a look at the bag and I'll just take all the components out of here. I've already used this tent uh, a few, uh, couple times and I have run it with the stove. I have had it set up without the stove. I've run it with the stove multiple times and uh, it's held up very, very well. As well as I've had this tent out in a blizzard with like really high, really, really high winds, like 90 kilometer hour winds, which is pretty, uh, pretty high winds. So without further ado, I'm gonna bring you guys a little bit closer and we'll take a look at the tent bag and the components and then we'll set up the tent. Okay, so looking at the bag right here, uh, there are two carry uh, straps, handles there. There uh, And there's also a zipper as well as two buckles here. So to, oh, to get into the uh, bag, we just uh, pop these buckles off. As you can see, there's the Pomali uh, branding right there. And we will open it up like that. Pretty good zipper. And this bag is made out of canvas as well, and it's really nice. It's a cotton canvas. What I'll do is I'll link you guys to the Pomali website where you can take a look at the tent and look at the specs and all that stuff. That way I don't have to worry about listing them off on the video. So this is the main body of the tent right here. It is held together with a strap like this as well. This has a tensioner, but we'll get into that in a second. Put that off to the side. And we have uh, three more things in here. We have the main tent pole. Comes in this nice bag. You just pop that. Uh, just kind of like a tensioner, and that's the main tent pole. We'll get into that in a second. Boom. Then we have all the pegs in here. Basically the same bag, just smaller as the uh, main tent pole. So it's a good bag to hold all the pegs in there. Then we have the TP cap. This is for the top. As you can see, I'll show you in a little bit when we set it up. But the, uh, oh, I gotta flip it around like this. But actually the main, the pole, uh, slips into there like the main part of the tent the top Part slips into there, and then you just uh, bungee cord this around the top of the tent. So that's that right there And then there's nothing else in the bag. So uh, They're pretty simple just a few things and it does not come with instructions uh, But it's pretty much it's pretty simple to put it together. So we'll just uh, zipper this back up like that Like I said really like the bag um, I've actually had this hooked on my backpack, which I'm putting some video up here of now of a, a trip that I did in the winter. But as you can see, there is, uh, like I, I clipped these buckles on my backpack on the bottom, and I just like clipped them, fed one through and then buckled it, and it, and it held the, the tent, even though it is kind of heavy. These buckles held on the bottom of my backpack, and it actually uh, kept the tent on my backpack pretty well, so. Um, that is worth mentioning. You can strap this on a backpack, but this will fit in the main park uh, compartment of a lot of backpacks. Just, I was carrying a lot of gear, so I kind of needed just to, just to strap it on like that. But anyways, we're going to get into uh, setting up the tent. And we're gonna start off with the, the, main, uh, the main tent body. We're gonna put this other stuff off to the side, like that. Actually what we'll do is we'll take the tent pole, the main pole there, pop that off just like that. Let's take this out. Like so. So this section clips together like this. I'm gonna lay this off to the side. I am gonna knead it into it in a second. Uh, so yeah, put that off to the side there. Now, this has a little buckle, like I said. We just unbuckle that. And it has also has a tensioner so you can tension this and kind of squish the body down. The way I have it rolled, like I've used this multiple times, but the way I have it rolled, I have this, uh, the teepee cap kind of on the outside. Uh, that's not really a big detail. I don't really even know why I'm mentioning that, but you can kind of just 
roll it like this without letting go of that. And uh, there you go, that's rolled out. And then we'll just fold these right here. Fold that out, get it all unfolded. And I'm working underneath of a tree here, so. Okay. Boom. So, I will show you in a second, but there's two zippers, two doors on this tent. And so what I normally like to do is I like to, well, basically all the time, is I find the, one of the doors, and I zipper it out, or un unzipper it, <laughs> unzipper one of the doors. And I'll show you, I'll go through the de details of like the Velcros and everything in a second, like all the little uh, features of the tent in a bit, but I'm just uh, doing this, showing you how to set it up uh, kind of briefly here. So yeah, we'll just unzipper that. And what we'll do, we'll go like that. And I will just, hold on, let's see here. This is basically, this is gonna be the front. So right now you're setting up the front. What we can do is just have the door facing up. Like that, kinda. Just like so. Boom. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is you're gonna go into your, uh, your pegs right here. And you're gonna wanna grab, so there's two types of pegs in here. There's a, uh, there's these bigger ones here, and then there's these smaller ones here. So, yeah. Uh, the big ones are what we're gonna be needing right now. And, uh, yeah. So we'll just uh, get started with the big ones. And these are really well put together. These small ones seem to be good too, though I think they could bend a lot easier than these bigger, uh, I think these are called shepherd's hook uh, stakes, but I've driven them into frozen ground, like, and they, they were fine. I've, they're, they're really good. They seem to be uh, very, very strong stakes. So we're gonna just stake one side of the door down and these stakes go into the ground as long as it's not frozen without a hammer or anything or a mallet or anything like that. You can just do it with your hands. And then I just like to zipper up the door like that. And you don't need to stake this out if you're gonna be using this as uh, the door you want one side not staked so and then we'll just keep doing it we'll go down a little bit farther here as you can see this is uh one of the uh, stake out points for the smaller pegs so we're skipping those for now and we're going to move on to the bigger pegs there's five or six of them so we'll just what you should what you want to do is stake this kind of loose because if you do it too tight the center pole's not gonna be able to get up. So just keep going around and stake these out. It's okay if you stake them out loose or not proper. We can always go through after and uh, just kind of uh, move the stakes in or out or whatever we need to kind of make it a little bit uh, more uniform or whatever, so. Let's unzipper the main door. And we'll put the main pole in. So just pull up the top of the teepee and then you can just put the stake or the, the main pole in there, and it just slips into this cap right there, so. Like that, and then, boom. That's staked up. Now that is kind of wobbly, but we can fix that by pulling out the uh, points a little bit more. So we didn't actually stake it down too tight. We, uh, we did good, so we'll just pull those points out and make that a little bit tighter. Okay, so do this, I'm just gonna zipper the door shut again. We'll just go around and pull these out and just make them tighter. And there and there are little tensioners on the actual points too. So you don't necessarily have to pull them out to tighten them. 
just depends on the way you have the tensioner set already. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we'll just go around to these middle points here and just uh, stake out the rest of the tent. And then there's also these guy out points, which we'll also do. Okay, so then the next thing we wanna do is stake out these guy out points. So I'm gonna get a little closer up here and I'm gonna show you how these stake out. Okay, so here is one of the guy out points. There are four of these on this tent. And uh, yeah, so I wanna be completely honest with you. I do not have these rigged up the way they're meant to. I don't set them up the way they're meant to. I set them up the way that I set them up, which uh, I don't know. It's not the right way per se, but it's my way, I guess, I don't know. Anyways. I'm sure it'd be better if you set it up the way that Pomali intended, but uh, yeah. So I'll show you in a second. These just unravel. Just have them wound it up like wound up like this. So this is the actual tensioner right there. That is the tensioner for you to be able to adjust the tension of the guy out point. I don't really use that. Basically, all that I've done is I've gone right from the tent here, which I've tied into it right there. I go down to where I want to uh, stake it about, and all that I've done is just done like an overhand knot loop thing, which I'll demonstrate right here. Basically all that I did was I took where I wanted it to, like this. I just went like this. And I know you all are cringing right now, but that's all I did, I just tied a knot like that. And that's literally all I did. And then I just come here, pull it tight with the tent, and I just stake it right there wherever that lays. And then normally I just kind of bunch this up right here. Unless it's really windy, I'll just kind of bundle that up. But if it's really windy, I'll just kind of like uh, do a uh, hank it kind of. But this right here, I just kind of tuck it underneath there. Okay, so here's the top of the tent. We're gonna straighten up this ridge pole. Actually, we can do that right now. Now I'll do it in a second, it'll be easier. But this is the uh, top cover for here. This is the cover. So if you, uh, you don't need to put the cover on, but uh, if you're worried about rain stuff, I would definitely suggest to put the cover on. Or if you have a wood stove going in here and you want to keep heat in, then that would be another good uh, good reason to have this on. So just kind of goes on like that. So there's all these little clips and those all hook onto there, all these things, these little clippy things. So I would like to mention, like I was saying, here on the cover, there's this little, part right here which actually slips on like that and then this just wraps around right so I should mention that I do have this uh, door open so it's easier for me to actually do this otherwise it'd be pretty hard just like that so there is a kind of a little bit of a open there you can kind of you could also just pull that across and clip it in here too so you have that a little bit tighter so kind of like that and that should hold uh, your heat and stuff in. Okay, so here is the tent all set up. Okay, so a little bit of a better view for you guys here um, You can see there's quite a bit of space. So I said you could do two people So I'm back here behind the pole. You could have another person right here in front of the pole um, But if you're running a stove the stove jacks right here So it'd be kind of hard to have two people like that, you know, it technically would be possible but it would be kind of dangerous and a little bit cramped extremely cramped actually so I really would only suggest running this with one person with the stove and maybe you might be able to squeeze and I mean really squeeze two people in here uh, with the stove I should mention that there's these little clips here which you can actually uh, attach a half mesh inner so basically it, it's like a mesh inner that runs half the tent so it kind of clips in there and hooks in wherever and then that way, in the summertime, you can be, uh, you know, bug free. You kind of have a bug free kind of area because this tent doesn't have any flooring and there are gaps on the bottom. Like, you know, if the ground's not level, bugs can kind of get in there and bugs that are already in here in the grass. In terms of waterproofing slash water resistance, I can't speak all that much because I haven't had this thing in like a downpour or consistent rain, but I have had this thing in rain and in snow. Uh, like some like freezing rain kind of stuff as well as in as in uh, 
snow. I've had it in a blizzard and you know, it was pretty, pretty good. Uh, so yeah, it does keep the snow out. That's why there, there's, there's snow skirts there. So you can pile snow on the snow skirts and then it'll definitely keep those drifts out, but there's no four. So if it was drifting, I'm assuming that snow will get in here. But that being said, if uh, like there's snow already in the area, when you pitch it, just put some snow over top of the snow skirts and you're good. So I'm not really gonna say too much about the waterproof and water resistance. There is, you know, a decent amount of stip space. Like I've already said, this enough for two people. I'm like probably, f I'm, a f I'm 5'11", so, so like from here to here, there's enough space. Now, if you're up a little bit on a sleeping pad, you'll still be, you'll still definitely have enough space to sleep. Sometimes I did notice in that blizzard video, my head was kind of close to here. Uh, like my head was kind of up. I, I did, I was, I did have a pillow. So my head, parts of it, sometimes we're touching this fabric back here. Okay, so here's the stove jack. You just pull it up like that and it's Velcro. You can just pull it all the way like that. You can roll it like this and pull this little uh, toggly thingy. I'm not sure what the correct terminology for that is, but you just kind of hook it in like that and that stays like that. So you can run a stove. This is, I don't know, I think this is for like two inch stove pipes. I'd say that's, yeah, roughly like two inches. So I would say about like a two inch stove pipe would be a, about maximum. Um, you could probably mod this and cut it open or you could just take it out like this and put a new stove jack in. So this is also Velcro on Velcro like that. So it's kind of smart the way they did that. If you wanted to change it, you can just change out stove jacks. So you can have ones where it's like uh, the little slits that the stove uh, pushes through, or you can have just like this. Um, I'm not sure, you know, whatever you want to do, you can just, uh, you know, take it out, put a new one in. Okay, so I normally have the door open like this. This is normally what I do. This point and this point are both going to be staked out. This is the smaller stake, this is the bigger stake. But you can also unstake this and then have this huge opening. Then on this side, you can do the exact same thing. Now normally you wouldn't really use both sides, but you can do this if you want to. If you're like, if it's just the daytime and you're not worried about heat loss or anything. And then you can like basically, you know, you got a huge view. And then you just have these two parts like that which, you know, it's pretty cool. You can see a lot like that. So yeah, that's a cool option. Here's a close up shot of the stitching on the tent. As you can see, it's uh, very, very well put together. There's the zipper right there. And then on the other side, you can see there are some loose threads in some places. Is that that big of a deal? No, uh, not really. But there are places where it's been reinforced with uh, like the stitching on the, the points, the stakeout points. Uh, they're reinforced, which I'll show you in a second, but the stitching is pretty darn good in this tent and There are like like I said like there are some loose spots like there Like right there and and, and some other spots um, that could have been from when I was uh, uh, Taking it, you know in the blizzard some of those could have been like that But some of them were probably right out of the package as well just some just some loose ends, but that's kind of in general that happens with a lot of uh, with a lot of stuff like not just pens. And right here is one of the stakeout points. As you can see, it's been reinforced like that. So that is, is well, the stitching is very good on there. I'll lift this up and I'll show you the underside of the stitching. You can see there like that. There's actually no loose threads on that part on the underside right there, so that's good. And I also like to mention here on one of these connectors, this is starting to fray a little bit, not at the stitching itself, but just the end right there. So that's not really, I don't think gonna have that's not really gonna be a huge problem. And I'm almost 100% sure that that was not out of the package. Otherwise I would have noticed that. And I would also like to mention here on the zipper, on both sides, there's zippers on the outside and the inside. So you can, you know, obviously zip uh, from the, from on your inside, you can uh, get this zipped uh, closed or you can zip it open. But uh, yeah, that's good. The zippers, they don't have a name brand on them. So they're not like YKK, um, but they do seem good. Uh, that being said, you know, I haven't had this tent for that long, very really. Haven't used it all that many times. So, uh, you know, 
I'm not saying, I can't really say too much about the zippers. Anyways, but they, uh, you know, they seem good enough. So the scent is pretty simple. There's not really many uh, fancy parts about it. It's, it's a pretty simple TP canvas tent. Um, that being said, it is well put together. Um, and for the size of it, it's a little small, but you know, it's definitely, it's good enough for me. I'm 5'11", like I said, so I'm not a small person and uh, it's good enough for me. So it definitely has enough space for you, a stove and a little bit of gear. Um, it's not a mansion at all in there, but there is, you know, a decent amount of space in there. So overall, the Pomali Solo Canvas Yarn TP Tent is a, uh, is a good solo bushcraft style tent. It is a nice tent. It does look look nice. It's uh, It's got a nice look and the canvas is great. Now, would I recommend this tent to somebody? Yes, if you're looking for a small solo canvas, teepee shelter, I would recommend this tent. But with that being said, I haven't used any other teepee tents. So this is the only experience I have with teepee tents. But like I said before, I'm gonna put a link in the description to Papali's website where you can take a look at the specifications and all that stuff and maybe things that I didn't uh, talk about in the video. And you can find the price on their website as well. So with that being said, that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much and I'm looking forward to many more videos to come. Like I said before, sorry for the three month break there, but uh, it's nice to be back. So thank you guys for watching. God bless.